If negative pressure therapy has been ordered for your patient and it's now time to apply the dressing, it is useful to have additional items available. These would include several packets of skin prep as well as a suture removal kit. It is important to maintain the sterility of the dressing packages up to the time of application. At the time of dressing application, it is important to follow standard precautions. It is not a sterile procedure, so there is not a need for sterile gloves. It is not necessary to perform a surgical prep of the wound. There are instances in the acute setting when a negative pressure therapy dressing may be applied in a sterile environment. However, for the purposes of this demonstration, we are performing a clean procedure. Once you have selected the appropriate size sponge based on the wound defect to be filled, you can then open the packaging and proceed with application of the dressing. This demonstration is a artificial wound model that has been supplied to us by KCI. We are seeing here that this patient has a ischial ulcer that is a stage four ulcer. There's muscle fibers present in the base of the wound. This wound has no evidence of necrotic tissue and is beginning to granulate. This would be an indication for negative pressure therapy and negative pressure therapy would be used to promote wound healing by reducing edema in the surrounding wound bed as well as removing exudate and other fluids that may be present in the wound. There is no evidence of necrotic eschgar or active infection so this makes it a fairly straightforward application of a negative pressure dressing. Once we have identified our wound, measured it, staged it, and verified that the orders are correct for application of negative pressure therapy, we would go ahead and select an appropriate sponge. This sponge, as you can see, is much larger than the wound. It is now useful to have sterile scissors or a sterile scalpel. We can now begin to cut the foam dressing to a size that is slightly smaller than the wound. It is important to cut the dressing over a clean surface and not over the wound so that particles of the foam dressing do not fall into the wound. Once the foam has been cut and shaped to a dimension that approximates that of the wound, we would gently insert it into the wound. When shaping the foam dressing for application into the wound, Care should be taken that the foam approximates the size of the wound defect and when negative pressure is applied, it should just fill the wound or slightly underfill the wound. You do not want to have a dressing that fills the wound such that when negative pressure is applied, there is now sponge dressing on top of healthy skin. There are two methods to prevent the sponge from overlapping healthy tissue. One is to correctly size the sponge initially so that when negative pressure is applied, it does not overlap the normal skin. Another method would be to use your adhesive dressing to create a barrier around the wound to exclude the healthy skin from the foam dressing. This would be achieved by cutting a portion of your adhesive dressing, removing number one, occluding the wound, removing layer number two, and tearing off the leading edge. We would now then cut out the dressing around the area, keeping the normal skin covered with the adhesive dressing. We would then insert the sponge. Now you can see that even though the sponge is above and covers the edge of the wound onto normal skin, the initial layer of the adhesive dressing provides a barrier.
Once we have sized the foam dressing appropriately, we are now ready to begin applying the dressing and the adhesive barrier that will achieve a vacuum seal for the negative pressure therapy. Initially, we would like to take skin prep and prep around the wound so that the adhesive will more readily adhere. Once this has occurred and we have inserted the foam dressing into the wound, we would select a appropriate size piece of the adhesive covering. Using our scissors, this can be then cut to an appropriate size. If working with the adhesive, it is generally easier to use if we cut in a direction that allows all edges of the adhesive backing removal to be readily accessible. A dressing that has been completely cut free from the leading edge is now very difficult to peel the layers apart. This dressing has a initial layer that is removed from the adhesive and discarded. After removing the initial, lay that down onto the skin and rotate that up. Now we would start to slowly pull the dressing backing off as we stick the adhesive down surrounding the wound. Once this has occurred and we have achieved circumferential adherence of the adhesive, the secondary layer, which is a layer of thickness that is added to the adhesive for ease of working, is removed. This is what is labeled as number two. Once that has occurred, we can remove the blue leading edge. This is included for ease of work. Now we have the wound filled with an appropriate size negative pressure therapy sponge dressing. It has not occluded or covered healthy normal skin. We have now completed the initial application of the negative pressure therapy sponge dressing and the adhesive secondary dressing. At this point, we are ready to connect the sponge dressing to the negative pressure source. This is achieved using the supplied tubing and the adhesion system. In application of the tubing that is collected to the negative pressure generator, this tubing is supplied with a adhesive and a working backing that is then secondarily removed. At this point, our sponge is completely occluded by the film adhesive dressing. The first task is to remove a portion of the adhesive dressing over the sponge. This can be accomplished in a variety of manners. The simplest is to use a pair of scissors and cut out a portion of the adhesive. It is not a problem if you also remove part of the adherent sponge, and it actually makes this an easier process. It is important to have an adequate size opening to the sponge through the adhesive so that the negative pressure tubing is not occluded when it is attached. Remove the backing and place the negative pressure device centered over the hole that you made in the adhesive dressing. You can now remove the secondary portion and the overlying working backing. This splits apart. We now see that we have applied the negative pressure suction tubing over the negative pressure sponge dressing and the adhesive barrier. We have cut an appropriate size hole in the adhesive barrier and the negative pressure tubing is now placed over that and is well adhered. At this point, the wound has been appropriately dressed with the negative pressure therapy sponge dressing and its components. We are now ready to connect the tubing to the negative pressure therapy generator.